Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Judith Patterson. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Texas, and today I'm going to show you a card from the catalog. Um, this card can be found on page 58 of the um, 2022 to 2023 annual catalog, and it the original card here uses um, potted geraniums bundle. I don't have this bundle, so I'm going to be using the shaded summer um, stamps with the summer shadows dies. And so it's this card right here. I am going to be using the same designer series paper as the background, um, but I'm going to use a different color than the one they used here. So let me just show you that designer series paper real quick. This is the Pretty Prints designer series paper, and it's a lot like the Sun Prints designer series paper, um, just in different colors, and it doesn't have all of the patterns. So it comes in four colors. And, of course, each one of these has um, different colors within this color scheme. So it actually includes a lot of colors from um, Stampin' Up's color families. And, of course, every um, sheet is double-sided. Let me show you the other side. Are these prints just gorgeous? I love these. So this one I would put with Bermuda Bay or as Bermuda Bay, it's got a lot of other colors in it, like um, Coastal Cabana can probably be found in this one, maybe some soft sea foam. This one would be more along the lines of like Blackberry Bliss and Rich Razzleberry. Um, maybe some gorgeous grape thrown in there. This one has colors like Calypso Coral and Petal Pink. Um, Sweet Sorbet, I think maybe that darker color. I know Sweet Sorbet is in all of this somewhere. This is what I decided to use. And I'm showing you 6 by 12 inch samples here, but this is a 12 by 12 pack of paper. Um, so this is the one that I decided to use, the small piece here. And this is like ever Evening Evergreen. Um, soft, succulent, it's that kind of color. Shaded spruce, it's gorgeous greens. So, instead of using the colors that they um, chose to use on this card, I decided to just keep it simple, and I have a soft, succulent card base, um, along with my pieces for my background, and then... For ink, all I'm using are two Stampin' Rot markers, one in Calypso Coral and one in Evening Evergreen. So you can find the Evening Evergreen Stampin' Rot marker in um, the 2021 to 2023 in color marker pack, and the Calypso Coral can be found in the Subtle marker pack. So this is the stamp set that I'm using. It's Shaded Summer. It um, is one of my favorite stamp sets because it has all of these fabulous sentiments in it, and I'm always a sucker for sentiments. Um, but it's also really fun because I love to color straight on my stamps um, to get different different colors, and this stamp, these images are just perfect for that. And you can do the same thing with the sentiments to emphasize certain words. Um, so let's get to stamping. I'm going to start with a piece of cardstock that is two and a half inches by three and a quarter inches, and that's what I'm going to be stamping my flowers on. So always start with the lighter color um, when you're coloring directly on a stamp, and always make sure you're using the markers. So in this case, I'm using Calypso Coral first, and I'm just going to color all the flowers. Okay. 
and I'm going to switch to Evening Evergreen. And I always recommend using the brush tip when you are coloring um, directly on a stamp like this. Okay, and then once you have everything colored, just huff on the stamp to re-moisten any ink that might have dried. So, I'm sure that sounded interesting on the on the <laughs> on the um, microphone. Okay, so I'm just pressing down evenly, firmly. Let it set for just a minute to get as much ink soaked into the cardstock as I can. And then we have a beautiful image stamped. So now I'm going to grab my mini stamp cut and emboss machine. And I'm using the shaded or summer shadows dies. So these first showed up in um, celebration last year. I was really excited to see them come back in the annual catalog this year because they are perfect to use with a stamp set. So I'm just going to use it really quickly to cut this out. And this is a stamp set that the entire thing, whoops, got a little off center there. All of the um, dies, not stamp set, all of the dies in this set will work with a mini stamp cut and emboss machine. So I always like to get, I mean, of course I get stamps or dies that work with just the big one. But um, it's always handy whenever you have dies that work with this little one, just because this little machine is so handy. It's very convenient to have sitting around or to travel with. Okay, so there's my flowers. And now I'm going to use the same technique on a piece of basic white cardstock, four and a half inches by two inches. Um, of course, this isn't exact. It's just a scrap that I had sitting here. You just want pieces big enough that you can put, um, <clears throat> that you can cut out with the dots. Okay, so I'm starting again with the Calypso Coral, and I'm coloring above and beyond. Now I'm going to add color to the bottom part of the sentiment, which says, you go there a lot. So when I look at sentiments in stamp sets, I'm always looking for, um, I look for the basics, happy birthday, thank you, hello. Um, those are some of my most used sentiments, but I also like to find ones like this one that say something a little bit different than the normal. But I'm also looking at fonts. I love fonts that are easy to read and I love it whenever they pair um, something a little bit fancier like this with just a basic clean font. So again, I'm huffed on my ink to re-moisten it. And then I'm stamping just right smack in the middle of my cardstock. looks good. So now I have the potted succulents dies. This one is perfect for this sentiment, this larger one here, but um, I love all of these for sentiments. I use them quite often.
when you're using this mini stamp cut and emboss machine, it's a good idea to um, not line the ends up evenly. It's easier to get it started that way. So even just offsetting it a little bit like that will help to get it started just a little bit quicker and easier um, when you're pushing your plates through with a die in there. Okay, sorry about that. I can't move in my camera. All right, so let's get all of these pieces together and go ahead and put this card together. So I've got a standard card base here in the U.S. that's eight and a half inches by five and a half inches, and then I scored it at four and a quarter inches. Okay, so I have two pieces of that designer series paper. Both are four and a quarter inches on one side, then this one is half an inch, and this is three and three quarters of an inch. So I'm just going to start by gluing both of these down. And you can use liquid glue or tear and tape or um, uh, stamp and seal. Ooh, I don't know why I have such a hard time remembering that, except I don't use it a lot. All right, so I'm going about a half an inch from the edge. And then for this one, I'm going to add some glue to the back of it. And this is one reason why I love using the grid paper so much is because I can line it up and make sure it's straight. So half an inch from the side on that one as well. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and add the flowers again with a little bit of the liquid glue. And I am going to use just a skosh down here on the stem. I don't want too much, but... A little bit is good. And then I'm going to use my dimensionals. Got to have dimensionals somewhere on the card, right? So I'm going to use dimensionals for the sentiment. And then the card in the catalog did not have any kind of embellishment or anything on it, but I think that the brushed brass butterflies are gorgeous with this. Um, well, I just think they're gorgeous <laughs> just all by themselves. But anytime I use flowers, especially, I have a tendency to grab these butterflies. I don't know, I well, I have, but it's not very often that um, I use up an entire package of embellishments, but I'm already on my second package of brushed brass butterflies because I use them all the time, and I use a lot of them. So I'm going to use five on this card, and no, I don't think that's too many because you can't have too many butterflies, right? There we go, and that's all it takes to create this card. It's really quick, really easy. It's fun coloring straight on the stamp with your Stampin' Wrap markers. And for the inside, I'm just gonna grab a piece of basic white cardstock. This is four inches by five and a quarter inches. And I'm gonna use a half inch piece of that same designer series paper that's on the front. Again, I'm just using my liquid glue it's my favorite and you can put this right up to the edge on the left on the right you can I'm gonna leave just a little bit of a border here and my sh my piece is a little bit long because remember on the front we had it um, four and a quarter inches so I'm just gonna use my paper snips to cut the end of that off this is a scrap left over from what I had cut for the front so that's why it's the same length. Okay, and then I'm going to use liquid glue on the back of that and stick it in my card. I'm 
there we go. And then if you wanted to, and I want to, you can go ahead and grab another butterfly and put it anywhere inside this card. I'm just going to put it down here in the corner. Okay, so there's our finished card. And let's turn back to page 58 in the catalog. There we go. What do you think? I really like both of these, but since I don't have this, I think that this is pretty perfect. I will say um, I like just having a couple of colors on this card and of course I think the butterflies are a nice touch they have them here on the page they just don't have them here on this card they're on this one over here all right guys so let me know what you think of this card if you like this video give me a thumbs up I love getting those um, and if you would like to see more hit that subscribe button below I will be doing another video towards the end of this week with the same stamp set and the cards I'm posting on my blog and in my Facebook page this week are also using the same stamp set the shaded summer um, I'll be using it with the different colors and with different techniques and of course I'll be using the dyes that go along with it some too so if you want to see more ideas for this one then that's a great place to go to and if you want to use the same layout that we found in the catalog I would love to see what you do with that um, this is a great layout, very flexible that you could do a lot of things with. So, I hope you all have a great day. Happy stamping!